Kings. Hey everyone, Sean and Sav, and today you're gonna find out why lassos from cowboys and golf clubs from golfers is the same throw, the same anatomy. And once you understand the feel of how this anatomy releases, watch out, you're gonna be hitting it way farther. So let's get to it. So I got a piece of gym rope and we're gonna pretend we're gonna be swinging a lasso with this. So when I deliver this above my head and I want it to throw this, you'll notice I'll have to wait. See how my legs are active? I gotta wait for the next turn to get that throw out there. So you could use your golf club the same way. Actually, one of the cowboys in one of the videos that I saw says take a broom and twirl it over your head like this. Many of you, I mean, broom's a little heavy for a lot of people, maybe not for a cowboy. So you take your golf club and you twirl it over your head like this and you'll notice the elbow is leading in both directions. So notice as I'm going toward the target, the elbow leads my hand, the hand leads the club, and then the club releases. So as the club passes the hand, notice the elbow is now pointed in the other direction and the elbow moves in the opposite direction, bringing it around so that you can release it again. So then take both hands, put it on the club and do the same thing. Release, bring it around, release, bring it around, release. So notice as I'm bringing it around, see how the elbow is ready to lead again? So now if we do this in the golf swing, I'm letting the weight of my arms and club hang from my shoulders. I'm going to heave that rope into the backswing and allow it to deploy and get wide. So you can't throw a lasso unless it's got a nice width to it. And that's exactly what we're doing. So we, what we don't want to do is bring the arms into the body and not have the body move and then the whole lasso wraps around you and collapses. So we got to use the legs so that the pelvis and the rib cage gets out of the way of the arm club unit. Notice how wide that is? So I'm deploying my lasso and letting it gather. Now I'm going to be able to deliver that lasso with a nice velocity because it's got that width that I can sling. So bring that in, feel the weight of my arm lasso unit. I'm going to heave it and let it go. You can see how my brain has to go to the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way so that that lasso can come through. And then at one point, the weight of that lasso catches up to my hands and I get that beautiful release. And then that release brings me up and into my finish. And that's why sometimes you'll see, you know, guys like Arnold Palmer in his prime and Bernard Langer and Bubba Watson. You see these helicopter finishes and you'll see that in a lot of my swings. So that's us dissipating the excess twirl in that lasso as a self-preserving measure. You see how that works? So the other thing I want you to be aware of while you're looking at that is that when we're delivering the lasso, if I'm gonna twirl it out there, notice how wide my elbow is. Now, imagine me putting a head cover under my armpit and trying to twirl this lasso. I would, you know, twirl it around my neck. I need that width. So what people don't understand is that the golf swing is a two pendulum action. So you have your first pendulum, which is right here. When I bring both hands together to take my grip, the center is right there between my two clavicles. If I only had one arm, the center of that machine is my right shoulder. Then I add my second pendulum See my wrist and my elbow? So 
bring the hands together, pendulum number one is right here. Pendulum number two is right arm folding, wrists hinging. So you'll notice, see the folding pendulum right here that we have? So I've got to take it all the way back and gather it wide so that this second pendulum can make it all the way to the ball to deliver the goods. So if my right arm gets caught behind me, so if I bring that way inside and I'm stuck behind here, how am I supposed to get to the target? So I can't bring the lasso all the way to the ball. So what ends up happening is I need to early extend. I have no choice but to extend early and now the second pendulum has released before it actually gets to the ball. That's where you'll see the chicken wing, the early release, the, all this, you know, body English to try and get this over to the ball. Whereas if you have full width, see my elbow? This can twirl above my head and I can get this going. Whereas wide, fold hinge wide, now I have access to deliver that lasso all the way through and under. So you can see the slinging power that you have in a lasso. If I'm sending that lasso towards you, notice how it releases, comes back, and it, you notice the the full release that you have with the club face and the hand, so many of you are trying to guide the club to the target and you're not allowing that lasso or that golf club to release fully and you're robbing yourself from a lot of power. We're gonna show you another way that you can time this rope. So if you get any kind of gym rope, you cut a section off that's about, you know, 40 inches long and you use it like a golf club. So let's see you do a normal swing with it, Sav. <laughs> All right, let's see that again. Oops. Now, here's the cool part. So notice how you sent it back and you had to wait for it to settle. Yeah. And then once it settled around your body and started coming the other way, mm -hmm. you were able to time it, yeah. right? The first one was a little awkward. Yeah, I was like, and what then, in the And world? then notice the second and third one, you had it just beautifully, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the golf swing now, and when you get to the top of that backswing, you're allowing the weight of the club to settle on your wrists Right? Mm -hmm. So go to the top of your backswing. So notice right here, as the club is settling on her wrists, these anatomical snuff boxes that we use for hammering and throwing footballs and casting fishing poles, same thing for golf clubs. And you'll notice it's the same thing in the lasso. The, the wrist is rotating, but it's also hinging back and forth. So you're waiting for the club to settle bef before you deliver your lasso, right? Yeah. Uh, do one above the ball, okay? Go let it settle and then let it release. So where did you feel the release of the, that lasso? Beautiful. Now, what do you want in the way of that? You want the ball, the grass, and the ground. So what yeah. I want you to feel, if you take the club with your left hand and give it a little twirl toward the target, you can do it. There you go. Whoa. Look at that. That was excellent. Let me see that again. Good. Now, didn't you feel, did you guys see that big snap at the end of that rotation, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to feel now is you're collecting the ball and releasing the ball with that one swoop, that one pass. So do it over the ball. So pretend you're going to be collecting and releasing the ball with that release of the lasso. Did you feel it? Yeah. All right. Now you want to feel that you're low enough 
that ball, grass, and ground is in the way of that lasso release. That was close. Gotta let it come through on its own. That's it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's better. That was gorgeous. Irons has always been my difficulty. Well, so notice on that particular swing, didn't you feel like you were collecting here and releasing out there? Yeah. And the ball and the grass and the ground was simply in the way of the, of the release of your lasso. Yeah. So it's like a cowboy using that lasso to skip it off the ground, mm -hmm. right? So. I've also been working on my width of stance because I find that when my stance gets too wide, then I have like no more access. Right, exactly. To... Beautiful. Go find that feel. All right. That was the feel. It just wasn't solid. Just skinny. So lower yourself deeper with the knees and feel like you're going to stay along the ground a lot longer. That's it. Did you feel the difference? Yeah. So that's one thing throughout my lessons and my teaching is when somebody lowers themselves enough to do what you just did, mm -hmm. they feel way too low. I know because I'm so used to starting like up more upright yeah. and then because well, been... I start upright so that I can feel like I can squat in the downswing because sometimes when I start too low, then I'm like, how do I get back up and then back down? Well, I just haven't evolved in that yet. Well, uh, as, because also you've been doing long drive and you've got a 48 inch shaft and you're, yeah. you know. Yeah, because I don't want to be like this. That's <laughs> it. And you're not like the rest of the girls at over six feet. No. So you're basically going to be standing a little taller. Yeah. But now with the irons, because we have to stay along the ground a lot longer, I think what you need to do is really feel that you're low enough to begin with. Yeah. And you're, you, then you'll be able to use your legs to heave better in the backswing as well. That's what Moo was thinking too. That's it. That looks amazing. Yeah, there I can actually, I feel like I can actually like get through it all the way. I mean, look at that side spin. You only have 142 spin to the right. And that was the 160 carry finally. So. Because my eight iron should be up in the 160s for sure. That's it. That's where mine is. Feel the difference? Yeah. Didn't that feel incredible? Yeah. That was 165 carry salve. Oh yeah, that's more like it. And that was only 109 spin to the right. I mean, that those are straight freaking draws. Yeah. And even the misses now are tight. Right? So I think that if, if you rewind that swing and put it in slow motion, you're going to see a lot better squat. And it's, it's the squat, the preparation to deliver the lasso towards the target. Mm -hmm. You're using the ground to get through. Well, mm -hmm. in so doing, you also lower yourself to be able to stay along the ground for a long period of time. Yeah, I think the in my head I had it where like the squat like this and the squat up in the backswing was much more dramatic than I thought it had to be. Right. But it's actually a lot more subtle. So yes. it doesn't feel like I'm like, coming out of a huge squat and then like trying to get back down to it, it's like more subtle than that. It's not as dramatic as a, as I thought it would be. Right. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing also is right now you're trying to think your way through that squat mm -hmm. at 40 bits per second mm -hmm. instead of using your self-preserving machine. You give it the command. You say, okay, I'm going to release the lasso over there. Mm -hmm. We need to be, you know, we, we need ball grass ground in the way of that release. Yeah. So where do you feel you need to be to have ball grass ground in the way of that release? And you just did it beautifully. Yeah. Okay. Same thing for mine. If I, I've got my left hand at seven iron oh, here. Oh yeah, Mr. Lefty and right. I'm going to use the same divot that you have there. And I'm now using that super strong grip of yours. So I feel the weight of that lasso. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to wait for it to settle so that I can snap it out there. 
So that feels like my, see how much depth I have in my legs? Yeah. So that feels like I can drag that thing through the dirt very easily. That felt pretty good. So in conclusion, whether you do it, see how I have to wait for it, or whether you do it, release, release, release. Notice how I have to wait for that cycle before I can twirl it out there again. Sometimes I gotta wait for a couple of turns. So it's the same thing here. If you jump on it too soon, you get back there and you snatch it from the middle of your backswing, that's like a cowboy trying to throw the lasso midway through that cycle. It's just gonna wrap around his neck. So take the time to feel that full release of that lasso and that full cycle of momentum, and that's really gonna improve your game.